What's good, fam? We back at it with another video, man. We're going to be reacting to the riskiest addictions, my strange addiction. Um, I haven't done a video on these in a while. I might go back to doing these on Rumble while I react to a lot of episodes. Speaking of which, I'm going to be reacting to, I think I said it in the last video, Sinead's video on my 600-pound life. Y'all know I don't like that girl, so I'm a suffer. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna blow up also. Uh, but that's I'm gonna drop that on Rumble. I'll let y'all know when I upload that. So yeah, man, let's jump straight into it. I'm addicted to drinking gasoline. It tastes like Ow! sweet. What is wrong and with sour. you, you dumb? The birds are back in my throat. Just insane and it's so bad for you. We love you unconditionally. Will you please get help? Shannon, you could die. You could die tomorrow. I still can't stop. You'll stop when you dead, bitch. What is wrong with you? My name is Tom. I'm 55 years old. I live in Mount Pleasant, Texas, and cycling is my addiction. Pedaling is like a drug. If I miss a few hours, I'd become anxious and I start to develop cold symptoms. Tom started cycling as a hobby 25 years ago, but it quickly consumed his life. And now he's ridden more than a million miles. I'm so used to this that the bike seat is no longer painful to me. Tom spends at least eight hours a day, seven days a week, riding. Dang. That's almost 3,000 hours a year. I'm not ashamed of how many hours I, I spend on a bike. The first thing I think about when I wake up is cycling. Coworkers, they know where to find me. I'm always on my indoor bike. I'm right there by the phone. I have my computer attached to my bike. As soon as I get home from work, I go out on my road bike, uh, come back after about an hour, and I clip in and start going. 40 some extra hours a week on my bike is kind of like a second job. It completely consumes his life all day long. That's all he does. To me, this is one of the most sane addictions that I've seen on this show. <laughs> it looks, of course, wow. That's been more than 85, 82,000 hours. God. That's more than nine full years? I think the reason that I spend so many hours riding is because I get that endorphin, that wonderful feeling while I'm pedaling. In my little man cave sometimes, since there's no bathroom in here and I don't want to get off the bike, I would just use a bottle to urinate in. It is abnormal that my dad spent. Man, you got a man cave. You can go use the damn bathroom, man. Come on, dog. So much time on the bike. I just think there needs to be a balance. In 2009, Tom took his addiction to the extreme and pedaled for more than seven days straight. I set a world record. The record was 182 hours on a stationary bike. From day six on, I was having hallucinations every night. I fell off the bike once. I fell asleep off when I was on a bike. But Tom's paid a big price for his cycling achievements. He lives in constant excruciating pain and can barely walk because of his addiction. Oh, wow. My body is so adapted to the position of cycling that I can't stand up or walk 100 yards without pain in the hip flexors and low back. It's been difficult to see those little twinges of pain, you know, gradually increase. Continuing to ignore it and continuing with the cycling at the level and number of hours in a day that he's doing, he may end up having permanent damage. And them bike seats are uncomfortable as hell. Like, they, I swear to y'all, man. You can't walk the length of a football field without pain. It's like you're holding yourself back by not taking care of or listening to your body. And if you choose to ignore it, your cycling career may come to an end. But Tom's heard all these arguments before. Ten years ago, a doctor told him that he would lose the ability to walk if he didn't cut back on his cycling. Tom ignored the doctor's warning. I'm not concerned that I caused 
irreparable damage? I really don't believe that I have. I continue to believe the movement of cycling is beneficial. Tom is. If you doing it for eight damn hours, you gotta rest, fool. Distrustful of doctors. He will go and be seen and be recommended a medication or a procedure, and he declines them. Tom's family wants him to slow down, but he refuses to stop. It is frustrating to me. He's not going to be able to go forever at the pace that he is. I don't want to get a call one day saying that something happened. I, I see no reason to spend less time cycling. I think I'll be able to ride until I die. That's this the point. game, you're not ready for. Ride to the death. My name is Candace. I'm 19. I'm going to school in Fullerton, California, and I'm addicted to bleaching my skin. What? The skin bleaching started when I was in the 10th grade. I went to a more predominantly white school, so being dark wasn't really popular. The darker you wore, the more mistreated you got. So I just started bleaching my skin to get lighter. I say on me, dark is ugly. Why you wearing a hoodie? Because it helps me to keep from getting darker. What's wrong with being dark? I don't want to be dark. I don't look right when I'm dark. I use skin bleach four times a day. In the car, at the beach, at church. She says a lot of times it's a beauty regimen. I disagree with her. It is totally an addiction. Twenty times a day. When you put this one on. It feels like lotion, but it stinks really bad. Hey, this one, um, it kind of stings when you um, have an open sore. Maybe you should be putting it on your damn body. And another thing, right? I gotta say this, man. I've been seeing a lot of this going on in different countries, like in Africa. Listen, y'all are beautiful as y'all are, man. Don't let nobody, like, diminish your beauty. Talk about, like, you too dark or you too light and all that. Fuck them, man. Love yourself. Or get around people that's going to say that to you. Like, look, man, you look good as you are. Why is you doing this to yourself? You went to a predominantly white school and they talked about you. Man, fuck them, man. Boy, I'm a... Fuck them, man. So, how lighter do you want to get? Look at her. She, her beautiful skin, man. Come on, dog. Come on, man. I sound like Boosie. Maybe like two shades, three shades. What? Three shades. I don't see any progress. You're using this stuff. You still. Don't I know. see progress. Where? Almost Where? Everywhere. Even this is getting lighter. My levels. You know, you used to always talk about me being black. And look, look, look how I came out. I mean, I think my skin is perfect. You don't see. It looks good on you. Dark don't look good on me. I don't believe you. You know, there's health issues with using skin bleach. And this could kill you. I mean, I know what can happen. But I'm just willing to gamble the risk. Oh, I'm cool. I'm, I almost called out a name. I'm sorry. But yo, what? what Lacks it if it did. My name's Kimberly. I'm 26 years old. I live in a small town in Virginia with my parents. Who wants to go get your kitties? And I'm addicted to laxatives. I take laxatives probably about 10 times a day or more. On average, I'll probably take about 150 a day. For what? Yo. Oh. The most was probably around 250. They'll cause my stomach to make weird growling noises and sometimes I'll have to immediately throw it back up. Yo. I'm about six foot tall and 105 to 108 pounds. 
After my first year of college, I'd put on the freshman 15. My roommate told me about the lax suits. And the more I took, I felt like the better the result. So I just kept taking more. Girl, more. you ain't you ain't got nothing on you. What the fuck? You skinny bone. How skinny are you trying to get? God damn it, man. Or stupid. I man. probably lost around 50 pounds. Honestly, I've never read the warnings because I don't want to know what it's doing to my body. Oh my god! I didn't god. have to go to the hospital in the middle of the night because I was throwing up blood. They pumped. That's the fucking warning. You know what? Oh my god! These dumb it. My stomach and told me I should probably quit taking them because I had bleeding ulcers. I probably thought about it for a day or so. My mom and pretty much everyone in the family tells me, you need to eat. I tell them that I'm trying to do something about it because I don't want them to know what's going on. She pushes me away Man, if I you... say anything too much about her weight. You know, I just don't want her to take Look at any... all that! Girl, you eating laxatives. That's your food. Mm, yo, it's like with... I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck with black folk. And this is probably some white folks that's out there that think the same. When, when we see some people like, like really like, if you like my size, like big, and you start to see me just slimming down quick and shit, like, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you all right? You sick? You got, you, there's something wrong with you or something? I need to take you to the hospital, see what the fuck wrong with you. How the hell you get so, you lost, how much pounds you lost? You say you lost 50 pounds in like two weeks, bitch, take your fucking ass to the hospital. What is, man, no, man. You spitting up, but. You type of diet he or anything shit. like that. That's the one, like that nigga on that shit. That's what it is, he on that stuff. And he, on, he lost 50 pounds in two weeks, man. I just really want to see Kim happy. I've almost completely isolated myself from everyone. I just want to be at home and take my laxatives and be near the bathroom. Well, when I first started taking the laxatives, it would make me extremely sick and I would have to spend more time in the bathroom. At this point, I have to take them to be regular. I'm Bianca and I'm addicted to eating pottery. I can't live without it. It's something that my body kind of just craves. salty and kind of gritty and I like the way it dissolves on my tongue. I don't smoke but my older sister she smokes and that's where I get my cigarette ashes from. I don't know how she can actually crave ashes. It's disgusting. That cigarette looks really good. The ashes look really good. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's really weird baby. You're not gonna eat none of these ashes. She hates it. She tries to like hide it from me or grab it from me, but that doesn't stop me. I know it's not edible, right? Yeah, which kind of makes it more satisfying. Are you serious? Yeah. Stop, stop. Bianca. <laughs> hey, Bianca. yo, see, I'd have cussed your black ass out. I'd have cussed your black ass out. Get the fuck away from me doing that shit. Like, for real. I think Bianca moved on to the ashes because the pottery just wasn't gritty enough for her. She says the material of the ashes grinds against her tongue a little bit more than the pottery does. So have you, have you eaten any pottery lately? I have. You have any with you right now? Matter of fact. Don't eat any in front of me. <laughs> oh my God. Why are you doing Bianca? Yeah, because I don't have any pockets, so I'm like, Bianca. Yeah, I'm gonna to keep it. Stop. Bianca, uh -huh. you're not gonna eat that in front of me. You're not gonna get this today. But That's have ridiculous. Have no. Have that no. Oh. <laughs> you're not eating this in front of me. Lunch is yeah. over. Oh, please don't. Please. I, <laughs> I don't wanna push her away from me, but at the same time, I don't want her eating ashes. So I do the need to know it's getting God. serious. I'm Josh, and I'm obsessed with eating glass. This is about as far as I'll go on the glass. Uh, anywhere further than this, it gets a little thicker and uh, it gets a lot more dangerous to bite down.
Hi. Uh, you guys. I'm over at my buddy Dan's. Uh, we're gonna play some poker tonight. So it's my deal, right? I killed you last year. Usually in situations like this, when people are around, you know, I'll find uh, any type of glass I can eat. It was a bad idea to sit in the middle of the lamp. Yeah, there's pizza, buddy. This <laughs> awesome. is actually gonna do it. This is what guys. No. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely just stop it. Oh, just ruined an incredibly fun game of I know that light bulb was was working fine, Josh. No, no, it was burned out. See? Filament's gone. <laughs> it's you don't eat that. How does one discover they um, like the taste of light bulbs? Read a book. It was gnarly. You know, I've never had anybody just kind of whip out light bulbs and be like, you know, like it's popcorn, you know, just start eating it. Uh, hey, oh, yo, dude. Don't, Josh, you're starting to upset me. You really you think I just, can eat this? You need to. Stop. You really think I can eat this? I don't want to find out. <laughs> uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, uh, oh dude, you could have. Oh, you're gonna rip open the side of your mouth. Wow. Well, okay, you're gonna. Not just that. You're gonna cut your fucking insides open, dummy. You be man. You are a dumb ass. Let's see if she's alright. No, she's fine. She looked upset. She's doing it for the attention is getting out of control. I'm just really worried about him. I don't know what it's doing to him. So it's scary. It's really scary. No! Oh my god! Oh my god. Glass, you're gonna be eat, man. You ain't gonna be up here eating my light bulbs and goddamn glasses and shit. Get your fucking ass out of my house, man. Just another one, Dan. Stop eating my light bulb. <laughs> Why are you doing okay. that? Because there's no silver Okay, okay I won't like do it. like a drug addict type action right there. The sound that it made as his teeth crunched into it, that's probably nails on a chalkboard times 10. What does your doctor think about this habit of yours? I don't really go to doctors. Yeah, you might want to start. Being a nurse and his friend and knowing some of the things that can happen to him, I definitely hope he seeks help. All it's going to do is butcher your insides and just cause GI bleeds. By the time I chew it and swallow it, it's like sand anyway. No, it's, there's no enzyme inside of your stomach inside that's going to break down glass. Right. From the reactions I was getting tonight, seeing a lot of my friends, I am willing to find out what it truly is doing to me. My name is Shannon. I'm 20 years old, and I'm addicted to drinking gasoline. What my fucking phone? These people have lost their damn mind. I can't go a day without it. Like yes, I you crave can. it. I need it. I'll no, wake you don't. up, go to the washroom, and drink the gas. If I go out somewhere, I'll put it in a small water bottle. When I fill up my car, I'll put it all over my hand. I do it before I go to bed. It consumes your life. One year ago, Shannon developed a deadly addiction to drinking gasoline. Since then, she's gone from tasting the toxic liquid on her fingers to taking swigs of it every day. It tastes like sweet and sour like a tangy sauce. It tingles at first, and then it burns the back of my throat. Even though it, it hurts me, it makes me feel good. When I yeah. first found out Shannon drank gasoline, I didn't believe it. But when I small tone on her breath, more or less confirmed. <laughs> favorite way of drinking the gasoline is through the gas can or jerry can. I'm going to take the cap off and I breathe in the fumes that come forcing out of the can. Sometimes if there's any gas on the lid, I will lick it off. After, I put my tongue on the end here and tip it upside down. And I usually count to 15. And it tastes really good. Shannon. Let me let me drink some of my water for 15 seconds. Let's see how long this shit takes. Cause 15, you's a crazy ass goddamn woman, man. 
Hold on, y'all. Let me see how long 15 seconds is, man. Cause that's that's that that shit is crazy. Hold on, y'all. I I know y'all probably like I know this nigga ain't really about to do it. I ain't about to do it for real. But see how long this shit take. Hold on, fifteen. Ugh, I can't drink no more. Bitch, you taking gulps of fucking gasoline? I ain't no goddamn teaspoon. She gulping the shit, y'all. Man, it. Man. Her addiction has become so intense. She's even found other ways to consume gasoline. Eating the newspaper sandwiches, it's like a daily bonus. Oh my so god! So I just like put as much as I think that I will need or want into the cup, and I just eat the newspaper. They got steroid chicken that you can eat. You know, they got pop tarts and all kinds of fucked up shit you can eat. You don't have to eat this. If you want to eat something messed up, you can go right down to McDonald's, get get like twelve goddamn nuggets for like three three dollars, or go to Taco Bell get that goddamn whatever kind of meat they got that mystery mystery meat. You know, get some of that. You know what I'm saying? Get like twelve tacos for two dollars. Dang, it terrifies me because Jenna lives on her own, so I don't know how much she consumes on a daily basis. But Shannon's love for gasoline didn't develop overnight. I've really always loved the smell of gasoline. I remember when I was younger, I uh, used to sit behind my mom's car and just breathe in the exhaust fumes. Eventually, I'm like, huh, this smells good. It should taste good, right? The first time I drank gas, it was... Not good, it burns, really bad pain, like twice as bad. But I was really upset and alone, and I've always really been sort of depressed since my parents' separation when I was seven. And it sort of was an escape, and now it does make me feel normal. I get really dizzy. I have really sharp chest pains. I have pains in my stomach, in my intestines. My biggest fear is that she could die. I couldn't imagine life without her. Then how about you knock her the fuck out and take the gasoline away from her then? That'd be better than what the hell is going on now. She says, boy, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just at my wit's end. I will do anything she needs for her to stop drinking gasoline. I know this is not safe. I know it's going to kill me, and I still can't stop. It's scary. I want to buy your house. I can pay you cash for your house, no matter what condition it's in. All right, hold up before we get to the next one, like, because this then got even more crazy. All right, hold on. All right, let's, let's get it. What's the next one? You like eating shit? God my name is Keisha. And what? I'm expecting my first child. And I love sniffing and chewing dirty diapers. It has to have pee in it. It has to have pee in it. The heavier ones that have more pee smell better. Yeah. Mm, this one's soft. I love it. It just tastes amazing. I have one while I'm cooking in the kitchen. I have one in my drawers. I have one while I'm sleeping. I keep some in my trunk. I keep some in my pocketbook. No, for real. This is good. <laughs> you know what? After the day before, I even go out on a date with somebody. I'm asking them certain questions. And uh, do you like diaper, uh, do you got a diaper thing? Do you like smelling shitty diapers or drinking vape? This is nasty as hell, man. Hold on. <laughs> okay, continue. Mm. Like, you know when you're walking into a room and you smell like a strong smell like food and you can kind of taste it? That's what it's like. No, no, that ain't what it's like because it's food. It's food. You over there doing it with pissy diapers. You dumbass boy. 
I find a lot of diapers like all over the place. I brought my car to the car wash and I saw one of the workers pull diapers from beneath the car seat. It's embarrassing. Do you smell that? There's a diaper. See what I'm talking about? This is really an issue. Hurry up, baby's crying. It's very annoying because she doesn't care what time it is. She'll wake my baby up to take the diaper that's on the baby. Bullshit you are. My baby is asleep. Take your dumb ass back home. Man. I want to I wanna take this one off of her. Here. Oh, my God. She's going to cry. We're going to take this one off. Damn, yeah, this, what this is, is you? Ready to go. She's sleepy. Don't change her diaper right now. She's going to cry. The twins give me a hard time to go to sleep in the first place. She comes, she's making noise, going through the garbage pails. It wakes the babies up, and it's nasty. You let her do it! This is getting, like, out of hand. My addiction to diapers started about three years ago. One of my friends was changing her baby, and she gave me the diaper to throw out. And I kept it for, like, a week, and I smelt it, like, every morning, night. Keisha, come here. I'm this coming. diaper is in a cup. Just wash the cup out. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Girl, you gotta throw the whole cup away. That's... Yo, oh, yo, I'm getting mad. I'm throwing my stuff out. Come on. No, throw that shit in the trash. I try to like work with her, but I feel like she goes beyond for her diapers. She's even willing to dig in the garbage for her diapers. I'm gonna smell them just one last time and then you can have them. No. no. Please, Joel. No. Hopefully you guys can help me talk to her. I mean, I guess this is like the last resort. I'm fed up. I had enough. This is so ridiculous. How the hell you think you feel? You been smelling a tasty bit. Yo, oh. I'm trying my best to not be too fucked up when I say stuff, y'all. <laughs> Is what I really want to say. I would have to put it on Rumble. But, lady, how do you think he feel? If that's it, man, you know what? Yeah, I'd have been like, no, I I, 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 I can't do this no more. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And then you're her friend. Like, you let that girl come over there and do that. Like, girl, you ain't coming in here and taking no. Take your ass back home. You're not doing that. Then you be waking my babies up and stuff like that. They sleep. You better not pick my baby up and try to take her pamper off. I'm going to kick your ass. And then I'm going to kick you out my house. What is wrong with you people, man? Yo, I'm so stressed out after watching this shit. Oh, man. Yo, if y'all like this video, man, smash the like button for your boy, man. Comment down below what y'all thought. Share the video and subscribe to the channel for your boy, man. We out this piece. Peace, love, blessings. We out.